Okay guys, so <laughs> hopefully you got excited with that last video. Um, I'm going to continue because, oh my gosh, as I said in my last series, everything that he's been showing me and other people because he shows lots of us the same things so that we will uh, get together and that's what's called Iron Sharpens Iron. So we will get together and confirm what the Holy Spirit is trying to tell us. So I just wanted to um, go over this quickly. Uh, we just went over 1 Corinthians 15, 52, um, and the last trump is, in the Greek, it is, uh, 45, 36. <laughs> it's also 10 and 8, which is, <laughs> October is 10 and 8. Anyway, uh, it means I already knew this from previous studies that, um, it, the you know, there were different trumpet blasts for different things. Like, you know, they would do it at the new moon. They would do it um, on the Feast of Trumpets. They would do it, uh, you know, to call the assembly together. And in this instance, specifically, the last trump that we are all waiting for is the, um, it's the war trumpet. It's a call to war, which in my humble assessment of what scripture is saying it's calling the 144,000 to war and um, it's also um, interesting here that it's also in Revelation 11 15 the seventh angel with the seventh trumpet which is is a war trumpet so it's uh, interesting that um, that kind of connects or confirms what I was saying before about that different seals and trumpet judgments can happen in not sequential order but in different orders and um, one of the strongest words for one of the dates we looked at actually said that so uh, yeah so this is the the war trumpet that boldly announces God's victory the vanquishing of his enemies so yeah that the 144,000 will be doing that during the tribulation. So I just want to show you that. And then, oh my gosh, I just got so many confirmations about things that I've already been shown. I'm going to go through them real quickly just so you can see how everything is coming to pass. That myself and others have been shown, it's all coming to pass as far as it's culminating and funneling down trickling down into one uh, stream so as we saw the A22 in the Hebrew means a window lattice and uh, it's funny because not funny interesting because in Proverbs chapter 7 it's actually verse 20 but in verse 6 here it talks about um, the person that is speaking it's about the young man that goes off to, to sneak away to see the harlot and she's a harlot because she's married and her husband has gone to a far country and taken a bag of silver with him and she's playing the harlot and sleeping around on him while he's gone and telling the young man that you know he's not home don't worry about it and it's the Holy Spirit like telling the story like watching looking out the window and seeing this happen and that's actually verse 20 so um, in this chapter, the verse 20 talks about he, the husband has gone off to the far country. Far country means gone to heaven. That's symbolic for heaven. Um, and taking the bag of silver with him. Now, silver is money. And uh, that could be referring to the bride because we are the silver. It could be referring to um, the silver that was that Judas received that paid for the potter's field and we know who the potter is I'm not sure exactly what the silver would be because you know we're he's the gold we're the silver um, but it says in that verse that he will come back at an appointed time and that appointed time is the same appointed time that is used in 
Psalm 81.3 where it talks about blowing the trumpet at the new moon at the time appointed um, on our solemn feast. So those are the only two times that the appointed time speaking about when the bridegroom, the husband, is returning is talking about tied to Psalm 81.3. So, um, but the window lattice, and let me just quickly say before I forget, um, every time I read the word lattice, you know, you when you, uh, let me get my little pen out, when you, I'm sure most of you think of a lattice, you think of the, you know, the, the lattice work, um, like, you know, like a trestle that a vine would grow up on. And, um, every time I read this word lattice, I think of a net. And I also think of the matrix because he says he, and you see how a lattice is like a weave, uh, you know, the under, over, under, over. Now, you know, actually I think the lattice, the lattice work, a piece of lattice work is like that, that one strip goes under one bar and then it goes over the top. You know, not the ones that they like, you know, pre-make are probably not made that way, but you know, back in the day, before uh, modern things, they would weave the branches in and out because it, it makes them more sturdy that way. And Yeshua says that he weaved us in our mother's womb. And the womb, um, a woman's womb in the Bible is called the Matrix. And it just makes me think of the Matrix movies where, you know, Anderson finds out that he's living in the matrix because it's a prison basically you know it's these are like prison uh, cell door you think of a cell door that's what it looks like the matrix which is this reality this physical reality that we live in is the matrix is our prison that we're in and Yeshua is on the other side looking through because he's getting ready to bust us out of this prison. That was back in Song Song of Songs, uh, chapter 2, verse 9, where it says he's looking through the lattice. He's looking through the, this is the prison door because he's about to set the captives free. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Okay, so, so like I said, the window and the lattice has to do with Yeshua coming the bride, uh, which is the dove, is symbolic of the bride, also symbolic of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit being released from the ark um, to go find dry ground. Uh, and something within me, I was listening to someone's video the, the other day, and something within me, they mentioned, and I... I, I believe I agree with them that the Garden of Eden, the, the spiritual Garden of Eden, is actually outside the firmament, and it would be symbolic of the dry ground, the garden, where Adam was formed from the dust of the earth, representing the dirt, you know, the garden is dirt, is where life comes from, the life in the garden, the things that grow, grow out of the dirt. And the dirt is the dry ground. So the dove was sent out to look for the dry ground, to look for the garden. The dove was sent out to go to the garden, and she found it when she brought back the olive leaf, because obviously there had to have been a tree growing. So she, it was, it's symbolic of the bride going to the garden. And that's in Song of Songs too. Uh, when Solomon is speaking about his bride, she's in the garden. Oh my gosh, thank you, Holy Spirit. He's speaking to me right now, guys. Everything that I'm saying, he's bringing to my memory. And I, I'm just, it, he's speaking through me. It's not me. So, huh. do you see how it's all tied? There has been numerous numbers in, that we have looked at in the Strongs on the calendar, the calendars that mean ark, a box, a chest. Let's look at that really quick. 
one of the numbers is 727 and actually um, that's Tishri 27 seventh month 27th day means a chest ark and it's specifically speaking about the Ark of the Covenant um, the actual box another number that means a box or a chest which is symbolic of the Ark of the Covenant is Hebrew 712 or um, you know symbolic for the seventh month and the twelfth day now you know just because I'm showing the strongest numbers doesn't mean they you know that anything having to do with, with these dates is gonna happen he's just giving us a me it could but he's giving us a message and it's interesting too I just noticed that um, sorry that my I forgot to shrink the window down oh my goodness that 727 does not only does it mean a chest or an ark ark of the covenant and see Yeshua is the ark because the ark had the it had Aaron's staff which was a, a, a branch from an almond tree because it budded almond flowers the almond tree represents the tree of life which is Yeshua there was the almond tree was the tree of life in the garden which is what some people you know I can't say that emphatically that, that it's 100 percent true but many believe that he's the tree of life um the ark of the covenant held the ten commandments which is basically what the whole yeshua said all the commandments are fall under those ten and the first one is to love the lord thy god with all your heart soul mind strength and to love your neighbor as yourself and those two commandments Yeshua gave, and he said, "If you just follow those two, then you've fallen. You will help. You will have um, kept all ten. If you love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and you love your neighbor as yourself, then you are basically, by default, keeping all ten commandments. The ten commandments were in the Ark of the Covenant. It was made of shittim wood, which is um, or that was gopher wood that the Ark was made out of. Um, the Ark of the Covenant was." made of the shittim wood from the tree then it was covered with gold the Noah's Ark was made of gopher wood and covered with pitch so all the arcs all the chests they're, they're all symbolic of the same thing and Yeshua is the Ark the Ark was what saved the people from death Yeshua is what saves us from death so you see what I'm saying so there's even another number I don't, I don't want to go scrolling around trying to find it but look what <laughs> look what number means the seizing and snatching away as in a robbery which is the same as uh 726 which means harpazo in the greek do you see the connection um 712 um 727 so we we do have a 727 still coming on the Jewish calendar, which is, let's see when that falls. Oops, I'm passing it. It falls on October 26. Here, here's where. Oh, back up there. Let me show you. Hang on, I forgot to point out something. Um, the where it talks about the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark and the chest, and the Harpazo. It's 811. <laughs> you see, everything's connected. And um, here's our Potsu 2, same as down here, 711, 811. Um, so uh, back down here, this is 727, same as what we just looked at, but on the Jewish calendar. So the 727 means Ark or Covenant. It's on October 26th. <laughs> the day before, which actually 727 will begin in the evening on this day, which is 811. Do you see? Do you see? October 25th, and I think the 26th also. I think both of these dates are in the Back to the Future movies. See? Everything he has shown me, the 222 movie, the Back to the Future movies, um, the, the Infinity, the, the, the TV series Salvation, the the gift card that I everything is connected I feel like I'm living in a movie right now I feel like I'm I feel like Anderson waking up to I, mean, I already know the truth but it's just everything everything's connected 
everything I've been shown and other people, it's all connected. Um, and then it's interesting because <laughs> look here, I just now noticed that uh, on the 727 day on the Jewish calendar, it's Heshvan 27 or 827. This is the day in the Bible that Noah leaves the ark because the dove had come back and, and proven that the, the ground was dry. And so he knew it was okay to leave the ark. So, guys, I, I'm, I'm just saying, please, please be excited about this. So, um, yeah. I know for sure that, let me look at my notebook real quick. Hang on. Yes, this date, October 26th, which is a week from today as I'm recording, it's almost, it's almost the 20th, uh, it's 11.53 p.m., I, I think I have to go to bed soon, um, October 26th is in the Back to the Future movie, which ties into Brother Todd from It Is Finished, scene ten four, uh, because the clock tower in the movie Back to the Future, when the lightning struck it, it stopped at 10.04. Um, I, I mean, guys, I've already covered all that in previous videos. I've, everything I'm telling you, I've already covered in previous videos. And now, by these calendars, it's all coming together. So, this date, like I said, is in the Back to the Future movies. It can't be coincidence. It just can't be. Not saying that the people who made the movie know anything, but Yeshua is using it to speak to us because he, he knew that we would tie these things together. Um, so, Back to the Future, Noah leaving the Ark, 727, which means Ark. <laughs> and it also means the Harpazo. It also is uh, Strong's Greek 726 and 727 both mean harpazo, uh, snatching away, seizing, and it's interesting also because before I even, I think it was, I, I don't even real, I don't even think I real, realized that those strong numbers meant the harpazo. I could have, but I don't think so, because in Yeshua's long day, at midnight, he is arrested, and the definition of arrest, when you arrest someone, you seize them by force. Same thing as Harpazo, aka Rapture. So, do you see what I'm saying, guys? I mean, I, I could talk to you guys all day for days. 24 hours a day for days and days on end and and just and still not <laughs> put all the connections together it, there's just so many so anyway um you can tell I'm starting to get a little tired now I was wound up but so anyway let's please watch this next week actually you know here's another 811 um on the 24th is S110 on the Yanakian calendar. That's the day that Noah got the seven day warning from the Lord that he was going to flood the earth. He said, In seven days, I'm going to flood the earth. On Hesh 10. Uh, Hesh being the eighth month and the 10, you drop to zero because it doesn't count. So it's 81. The 81 is shown prominently in those. And then. <laughs> Julian calendar is 811 and <laughs> the 811 and the 81 watch this so it just so happens that here's one of the 118 commercials from 2011 um, they don't put the you know these numbers are not arbitrary and we know how they like to do things backwards so I was like well okay there's an 8 and 1 but if they read it backwards it would be 08 and then 81 and I was like, okay, well, that's probably nothing. But they show the 81 again in this very same commercial. 
So 08, does that mean <laughs> eighth month? And then there's an 81, the first day of the eighth month, like I just showed you right here. I don't know. 81, 81, but there's, there's another, like I said, there's another 81 in that same commercial. So that building that I just showed with the the 08 and then the 81, if you read backwards, is a country club. And this is a golf course. The two 118 guys are playing golf and they get the hole in one and the flag has 81 on it. So are they trying to say the first day of the eighth month? I don't know. The 118 could also be 11-8 or November 8th. Who knows? I forgot to mention that the City of Ember movie, because you can pull it up on YouTube, um, does show the movie, I'm sorry, the number 223 in it, at the beginning of the movie, and of course I stop it at 1 minute and, one, and 17 seconds, there's 117. <laughs> so since I'll, the 22nd is the day we're looking at, and we know October on the Gregorian is the 10th month, I you know, said I would show 1022, so the Greek Strong's number 1022 means slowness, tardiness, delay, <laughs> slackness. Now this is Second Peter 3, 9 is where um, it says, I'm going to paraphrase that the Lord is not slack in uh, coming for us, but he's patient because he doesn't want anyone to perish, meaning he doesn't want anyone to go to hell. So we don't count it his his tardiness, his delay as slackness. It's not that he doesn't care and he's like, oh, I'll get to him when I get to him. It's because he's trying to make sure as many people get saved before his judgment comes. And uh, back to, I'll, I'll cover that in the next video about the Urim and the Thurim. The two stones in the high priest's breastplate um, is the root word of Uriah, which in the Hebrew is 223. So do you see how everything's connected, guys? And the, the priest would use the the Urim and the Thurim to um, make a judgment call, whether it be for good or for bad. Uh, Samuel will use, the prophet Samuel will use them to um, ask the father who he wanted to become the king of Israel, and that's how he, he knew to choose David. And, you know, then it was also used in the book of Judges when, you know, they didn't know how to uh, put forth a sentence on someone as far as their judgment. And so they would use the Urim and the Thurim. Um, but I scrolled down here to read a little bit more and it was very interesting. I just loved going down and reading what it says. Where did it go? Maybe I clicked on Okay, I must have clicked on one of these root words. So if you go back to Strong's number 1021, to get to the root word of 1022, it's bradus, properly slow, as in taking time to deliberate, unhurried, while still moving forward after considering all the facts. That's what Yeshua is doing right now. And that's what the Father's doing. So I just had to show you this because it's so awesome. So 1022 in the Hebrew is uh, Beth Halachmi. And it means an inhabitant of Bethlehem. Do you know what Bethlehem means in Hebrew? House of bread. Who's the bread of life? Yeshua. An inhabitant of the house of Yeshua. <laughs> that's us. Oh my goodness. So, you know, citizens of heaven, that's us. People of Bethlehem, of, uh, of a people, the Bethlehemite. So, um, Bethlehem, it's Bethlehem in Hebrew, which means house of bread. So, um, that's why Yeshua was born there. So anyway, guys, I'm going to cut this one off, and I'll have to continue tomorrow, because I need. by the time I edit this, it's going to be really late, and I need to go to sleep. I have wonderful, great plans tomorrow, so I can't be too tired. Um, so it'll be tomorrow evening before I can pick this back up and 
keep going because I just it's just amazing what he's shown us. So I, I'm gonna say goodbye for now. I, I pray this has blessed you, and I will talk to you all soon. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the Universe. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. I love you guys. Shalom.